Well, good evening. This is uh, the MAP show, and I'm excited to be you be with you this evening all the way from the green screen in Pretoria. <laughs> so tonight we're going to be talking about something rather exciting, and that is how to create. And uh, just earlier this uh, week, I was having a discussion with uh, Henny, and I'm sure by now you are familiar with uh, Henny all the way from Rudderport. And uh, Henny and I were talking along with Rian about the concept of how to create. And there's, there's four particular principles that I want to share with you this evening. And uh, we're going to do it in just 15 minutes. So that's a, a really short time. But I think what I share with you is going to be sufficient for you to begin to understand how one turns your dreams, your ideas, and the future into reality. You might think you need some kind of special um, uh, miracle happening in your life for this to take place, but I want to share some principles, I believe, that I have been beginning to understand as a result of map for life being used by many people around South Africa and in over 100 countries around the world. Now, I'm not too sure where you are tuning in from and uh, whether you're watching this recording or you're watching it live, but we'd love to hear from you. So please share your name and your location, and we'd love to engage with you as we discuss this evening. So tonight we are talking about this particular subject, how to create. And, and I was tempted, I was tempted to <laughs> write down how to create from nothing. But of course, we, we're not going to be creating from nothing because we are literally living uh, in a creation. There wasn't uh, wasn't too long ago when I was watching one of the uh, talent shows, and it was during a period when the audience weren't able to attend. And I'm sure you know what I'm referring to. And uh, this particular person was wearing a yellow jacket, and on this yellow jacket were the words "created to create." And I think that's those words are exactly right about you and me. And you know, Map for Life, what I've learned is actually a creation catalyst. It, it, is, it is the ingredient that enables you to define the future in such a way that it can become a reality. And so I was asking questions. Why is it that Map for Life actually works? Why is it that when people use this tool, they begin to create things that never before existed? Why is it that people's dreams start becoming a reality? Why is it that people's ideas start taking root? Why is it that the future that they imagine in their mind seems to become a reality? I mean, this was an interesting phenomenon to see it happening in front of my own eyes as I was journeying into the future with Map for Life. And I want to share some of the principles that I believe I've gleaned as a result of seeing what appears to be a uh, something of a miraculous nature. And so the first principle that I want to talk about this evening is called, or I've called it, the principle of creation. And the principle of creation is something that many cultures around the world have talked about in their story of creation. And, and I'm sure um, if, if you're like me, I was privileged to attend a Sunday school. The name gives it away. <laughs> it was a school that happened on a Sunday morning in the farming community where I grew up. And uh, because it was out in the, in the rural district, it happened once a month. And I used to attend this uh, Baptist Sunday school once a month. My mother used to drive us to this particular farm. And they used to talk about the story of creation. 
And, you know, all stories that I had heard up to that point were um, kind of uh, fairy tales. I'll use that word, fairy tale. So at a young age, when I heard the story of creation, I just made the assumption that this is one of those fairy tales. I mean, how can you speak things into existence? And, and so I began to uh, listen to this creation story and kind of uh, put it in the back of my mind as a, as a fairy tale of some kind until Map for Life came into existence and i realized then that the story of creation had in it the very key that you and i can apply and begin to turn our dreams our ideas into reality and and the principle is just three words and those three words Oh, <laughs> you can go and read them in the book of beginnings. Uh, I think it's called, you know, when we talk about the genesis of something, we talk about the beginning of something. And so if you go and read the book of Genesis, you will find in the very first chapter, which many people, by the way, read as part of their New Year resolution. <laughs> they go through the first chapter of the Bible. And inside there, the three key words that, are, that I'm talking about this evening are the words, let there be. And why I say I understood this when I, when I uh, uh, put Map for Life together was because I had literally spoken those words. Maybe, maybe not audibly, but I was standing in front of my filing cabinet. I pulled out my, uh, the files of notes that I'd listened to, starting from Anthony Robbins right through to Zig Ziglar, John Maxwell, and all of the people that I'm sure you've read. And, and I, I, in that moment, I said, let there be a manual that can help me to achieve my goals and dreams. And so... When I look back over time, I recognize that every single thing that exists began with those three words or a version of those three words. What it literally means is that you and I speak our ideas and dreams into reality. Because there is power in the words that come out of our mouth. And the question is, what is the language? that you are speaking? Are you using the power of the words that you speak to bring life or death, blessing or curse, <laughs> creation or destruction? What words are you speaking? When I listen to people, I often hear them speaking both words of creation and destruction in the same sentence. As they speak something into existence, they follow it up with a phrase that cancels out that which they have spoken. And very often it is the words, if, you know, they, they will speak about something, I wish I had, and they would express or describe the thing that they wish to create but I don't have, and then they would list the things that they don't have to make it a reality. In essence, what they are doing is speaking something in and out of existence in the very same sentence. So what is your vocabulary? The principle of creation is the words, let there be, dot, dot, dot. It's your responsibility to fill in the blanks because you have the ability to create. A simple demonstration of the power of words is when standing in front of an audience and asking them to please stand. <laughs> you know, just those words, please stand, causes the entire audience. It doesn't matter how many. It could be in a sports stadium with 50,000 people, and they all stand up just from those words. When you say, please be seated, that entire mass of people, imagine 40,000 people, how many tons of weight that is, and they all sit down just from the spoken word. Your words have power. Speak life. You see, once you've said, let there be, you could just as well say, 
there it is. There it is. Because when you, once you've spoken it, it has been created. In fact, before you speak about something, before you speak it into existence, you've already seen it with your mind's eye. So you could almost state the words before you say, let there be. You could say, let, there it is. I see it. I imagine it. It is done. I, I can visualize it. And then we speak it into existence. Now, just, just stay with me for a moment. <laughs> Because somebody's listening tonight and they might say, what are you talking about? I speak things and they don't appear. Well, we need to understand all the principles of creation or rather the principles that I'm talking about this evening. The first one, the principle of creation. The second one is the principle of completion. And the principle of completion, strangely, is simply the words it is written. I mean, when you put together your vision board, when you write down and describe what it is that you have already seen, what you've already created, when you draw the plan, when you set the specification, when you do that, you are actually writing down or putting together the picture of the finished or created thing. Nothing exists today without first a written documented plan. You, you may have a big dream. You may have a, 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 an incredibly exciting idea. Maybe there's something that you imagine in the future that needs to exist. But perhaps you haven't taken the first step you know, so often people say it's the first step that is difficult i want to tell you just because something hasn't been done by the majority of people does not mean the step is difficult it could mean the step has just not been taken and the step for you and i is simply to write it down this is one of the key things that makes map for life so incredibly effective it's because it enables people to describe to write down to uh, to to visualize the very thing that they have already seen the imagined future so the principle of completion is it is written and by the way when you draw the plans of a house you submit those plans to your local authority and they approve those plans and those approved plans go into their records as history. Before the house even exists, it already appears in the record files as history. It is good as done. That is how powerful writing something down is. So when you can say it is written, you have literally recorded history in advance what's interesting is the first map for life was called my history in the making <laughs> i had no idea the power of those words when you write something down you are literally recording history the people who come afterwards and explain what you did are not recording history they simply recording what has been done which you had already recorded before you did it. So the principle of completion is the second of four principles. The third one is or has got a new name. <laughs> so Henny's ready. He's waiting. What is this new name? And, you know, after our discussion on Monday morning, and in particular, my walk of preparation. You know, before I give a talk on a Wednesday evening, I always take an hour walk and I think deeply about the message that I want to deliver. And on my walk in preparation for this evening, the principle of conviction arrived. And I believe that when you have spoken, let there be, the principle of creation, and you have written it down, the principle of completion, then comes the need for you to be, to be so committed, completely convicted, that you can make a statement that says, so 
be it. And when you say so be it, or, or maybe another single word that is that means the same thing, when you say amen, <laughs> you know, you, you know, you normally say that after a prayer, you say the word amen. So maybe when you speak something into existence and you write it down, you've actually defined your prayer for the future and you say amen, that means that you believe with all your heart that what you saw. What you wrote, what you described, what you, sorry, what you spoke and what you wrote is a done deal. It is already complete. In fact, you could say it is done. It's got to be that kind of conviction, complete belief. Why? Because for something that you have already seen, in other words, a future vision that you have seen that needs to come into the present requires you to step in faith. And the only person who steps in faith is someone who has complete conviction. There's a lot of people that have wishy-washy ideas and dreams. They talk about things to impress other people, but they lack conviction. They, they fail to take action. Even knowing the principle of completion, they still do not write it down. And I want to encourage you tonight. Whatever it is, take a, take a piece of paper, a notepad, <laughs> get a pen, write it on the wall if you have to, on the fridge door. I mean, this is so powerful. It's going to change the future. Just the act of writing it down. And then I think people who go and take a, blick, a big permanent marker and write their vision on the wall. Those kind of people, man, they've got conviction. They've got conviction. How convinced are you that what you have seen and what you have written is already as good as done? Conviction is an important principle. And then the final principle I want to share with you this evening is a a new word, Henny. You waiting for it? It's called the principle of commencement. Now, the principle of com commencement is like an oxymoron because the principle is simply this: it is finished. I, you've got to get to the point where your conviction has led to action that completes something. Because before something can begin to fulfill the purpose for which it is created, it has to be finished. In, in other words, you and I are literally walking up to the start line, not the finish line. So many people talk about the end of someone's life. Well, I want to say to you, if you begin to pursue your purpose, the end of your life is the beginning of another. And the beginning of the other is the beginning of the life that exists as a result of you fulfilling your purpose. You and I are literally walking up to the start line. When you re are recalled one day, <laughs> that which you were sent to start should begin. And you should be able to speak those words. It is finished. In other words, it has begun. It has started. And for me, these four principles are more than clear. They are there's evidence that confirms this. Over the past 23 years or 24 years that I've been observing people who use Map for Life and go through the process, the people who passionately speak about the vision that they've seen, the people who have described it in the form of a written documented plan, the people who believe it with conviction and act upon it as if it's going to be a reality or that it is already a reality. They, in other words, they step in faith. And the people who don't only start well, but complete and finish what they start. These are the people who create seemingly things out of thin air, <laughs> out of nothing. Things come into existence. The question that you and I need to ask this evening is what are the words that we're speaking? What are the things that we have described in writing? What is it that we believe beyond any doubt? And what is it that we are so committed to that we will finish it no matter what? Because it's those things that are going to become 
the future that we all share in, the future that we enjoy. I hope that what I've shared with you this evening is going to be of great value to you as you step into your future. Because you know something? I want to remind you that you were born for a purpose that the world cannot do without. And you know what? I, along with the other 8 billion people on the planet, are waiting for you to show up. We are waiting for you to begin to act on that which is placed in your heart. We're waiting for you to be brave, to be bold, to take that first step, even when you don't know how. In, in fact, particularly when you don't know how, because that is not your responsibility. In these principles that I shared with you, how did not feature. So I trust that this message will be a message to encourage you to take action, because nothing happens until someone does something. Or should I say, nothing happens until someone speaks about it, writes about it, acts on it, and finishes it. And those four processes are absolutely key. I'm going to look at your comments in a moment, and we'd love to, to take those further. So thank you so much for sharing your comments this evening. I'm going to welcome the panel in a moment, uh, all the way from Johannesburg, South Africa, and also Zimbabwe. We might even have someone from our French-speaking neighbor, neighborhood. And I trust that tonight you will also share your comments and insights so that we can discuss them and grow together. So I'll be coming back right after this short break. Hey guys, I'm I'm excited to to see the people joining us from uh, I see from Uganda this evening. Uh, welcome, great to have you joining us, Linda from Malawi, Paul from Pretoria, South Africa. I see Master has also joined us this evening. Great to have you, Gwadi from East London. And you know, I just it's just so wonderful to see that we are spreading around the planet. And um, it's it's great to have Henny and Primrose joining me this evening. I'm going to bring them into the studio and uh, we're going to have a, a short chat. Uh, but before we get started, um, Henny, you on the top over there. So why don't you just quickly introduce yourself and uh, tell the audience where you're from, how you got to hear about Map for Life. Good start. Good evening, everybody. I am from Ruderport in Johannesburg in South Africa. Uh, it looks like we've always got load shedding where I am, but that doesn't stop us. That creates different opportunities for us. Uh, I started with Map for Life about 18 months ago for the first time, and, and I do want to iterate it. Uh, I took it as a magic program, and it didn't work for me because I wasn't doing what Glenn spoke about just now. Those four principles need to be there. You, you need to speak the right language. You need to do everything. And then about three, four months ago, I decided and I made another call to say, listen, I'm going to go map for life, but I'm going to make it a lifestyle. I'm going to really embrace everything, do everything I need to do, live it by the book, write things down. That's why principle two is so important. And you won't believe what big difference it's made. Um, so yeah, that's me. I'm super excited. Love to to deal with you guys. Whatever comes across tonight, um, do feel I've got some nice things to share with you as well. Fantastic, uh, uh, Henny. I see that you and I have kind of swapped swapped things around. Yeah, I've got the green background, and you've got the green foreground. Um, <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> so I think when you put that that uh, that interesting um, uh, artificial overlay, um, we're going to see something interesting happen in your in your uh, video <laughs> picture. But uh, thank you so much. Good to have you part of the panel tonight. And uh, I'd also like to welcome Primrose all the way from Zimbabwe, um, uh, Harari in particular. So Primrose, um, if you are able to unmute your mic and uh, just introduce yourself to the team, it'll be lovely to hear from you. Thank you very much, Glenn. I hope you can all hear me. Uh, Lord Shading has started here. So the network is unstable. I'm Primrose from Harare. I got to know about Maple Life in uh, 2012. And um, last year when I opened my blueprint, I then realized the things that I listed back then, um, some of them have actually come to, to pass. So... The moment I wrote them down, I believe um, I started creating something. Um, I can't say I was very consistent in the use of the tool, um, but the fact that I wrote them down, they came into existence. And some of them I, are already manifesting right now. So there's actually power in writing things down, Glenn. Uh, thank you very much. Primrose, you know, um, it's just it's just wonderful to hear that, and I still I still remember when we first met, and um, and the journey that has been taken. In fact, this week on on Tuesday morning in one of our map clubs, there was somebody who joined us at six a.m., and her name was Hasina, and Hasina was attending the very same training that you attended. She was sitting on the opposite end of the table to where you were. Do you remember that that uh, the, the the innovation hub where we had our session. I'm sure yes, you remember. Yes, I remember. We were sitting diagonally across from you, and I've got that picture in my mind. We still have the video, so um, you know you can't escape that you've been introduced to Map for Life. <laughs> but it's exciting that you're here after so many years and and doing such a, a wonderful work in Zimbabwe. So thank you for joining us tonight. Um, I'm going to keep my my eyes on the on the comments this evening so that um, I I hear and see what what our audience are sharing. Um, but Henny, you were you were saying you've you've got some insights that you've had that you'd like to share with us tonight. Yeah, I, I think um, I've made a change in my life and the way that I do things. The key thing that for me that stood out was a, a, a quote from from Einstein saying. Insanity is a definition of doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. A lot of the times we, we want things to be very different for us, but we're not prepared to go and change anything. And I think for me, that was one, one of the key things. I, I also read something that said, um, I always wondered why somebody didn't do something about it. And then I realized I was somebody. Um, so... I think from my side, the biggest change was really to say, know where you're going. Go and write down, have a plan, put it on a vision board, have your affirmations. And, and for me, practically what I did is I started a morning routine. So I get up in the morning and, and I do that. And it does make one unbelievable big difference in life. You go into life energized you feel you are making progress, you feel like you are going towards where you're supposed to be going. Um, you put things down, you all of a sudden take some time, you slow down and you look behind you and you see, yo, can't be, look what I've managed to do. And then, well, it can be, because you start putting something down, you create yourself a routine or a habit, you stick to that habit, and that is like the plotted map, like a um, map for life is doing. You've got your GPS on. You know where you started. You know where you're going. Um, a GPS means nothing if the car doesn't start and you go anywhere. So you have to start your car and start driving towards your destination. And then unbelievably things starts happening. You've written them down and the universe conspires to join in. Things are just happening for the best. 
you know, um, I I was just apologize. Uh, uh, Yuri Yuri is uh, is he's he's connected, and Yuri, I'm going to bring you into the into the the chat. So um, I trust that you can unmute your mic. And uh, of course, for those of you who are watching this evening, you will know that uh, in in Africa, <laughs> where we are, they, they, we, we're experiencing a worse situation than the people in Ukraine. I think, as far as power goes, um, amazing. But uh, that's that's the experience. And the good thing is, here in South Africa, uh, and in particular in Map for Life, you know, we have a book of excuses that we could use. But in Map for Life, we refuse to use that list of excuses. We're going to press on nonetheless. <laughs> We're not going to use an excuse. We're going to engage. And so um, I'm going to uh, uh, talk. And if you if you look very carefully, you'll see there is somebody in, in the background, and that's Yori. <laughs> Yori is from uh, the DRC, um, but I, I believe he's uh, in... South Africa currently, I might I might be wrong, but uh, Yuri, are you able to unmute your mic and maybe just greet, uh, tell tell the audience where you're from and how you got to hear about Map for Life? Yes, I, I think that uh, everyone can see me. <laughs> it's too dark, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a black skin that is very contrasting. Yeah. <laughs> So okay, as uh, you, 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 if if we play hide and seek, you're gonna win. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> as long as you yeah, don't smile. As long as you don't smile, Yuri. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what? I'm trying just to to switch off my my laptop so that we can. Uh, uh, unfortunately, it's load shedding. I'm currently in DRC um, uh, at Lubumbashi, precisely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, I, I have joined uh, Map for Life. Uh, I have a, a great opportunity to start with Map for Life. At the beginning of uh, COVID uh, pandemic, uh, it's from a friend of mine who told me about it. It was a great, a great, a great opportunity as uh, I, I embraced the 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 way of uh, uh, new thinking with Map for Life. It's very exciting and very productive, very useful, uh, even if. Uh, as one of my colleagues mentioned, uh, I didn't not consistently, but uh, it helped me a lot. Yeah, to realize that uh, uh, you have we have to 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 map our life. And uh, uh, as part of the lesson for this night, I I, I do appreciate the 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 the, the insightful uh, comments uh, that we need to to create. We need to to act. To, Act and uh, that is it. thank you so much, uh, Yuri. Thank you for for joining us this evening. And I, I just want to I, I'm glad that you're meeting Henny this evening because Henny is uh, busy with his second translation already. He's he's translated the the gems for 2023, the leadership gems into Afrikaans. He's busy translating them into Dutch and uh, Henny. Yori has been doing some translation work in French, and so I think we need to we need to co-opt him onto the translation team so that we can get the the uh, the gems for 2023 that focus on leadership available for French speaking the French speaking world. Yori, what do you say? Yes, I will be glad to be part of the team. Yeah. Mm, Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Ah, that's really <laughs> wonderful. De rien. <laughs> there we go. And, and we're going to learn some. Uh, Henny, I'm sure you, you're excited to have someone else part of the team as well. And I think maybe just, uh, do, do, you, do you know what languages we all have already, Henny, that are starting? Mm, from the top of my head, let me start going through the list. Um, I should be able to get to a view where I can see them all. Um, I know there's Afrikaans, so obviously there's English. Got their yeah. fingers on the pulse. There's Malagasy that we started with. Um, and just quickly see, there we go. Swahili is there, Zulu is there. Portuguese and French, I believe we've got Arabic, Punjabi is on the way. 
um, Dutch is on the way. I've completed the first 31 gems so far. That's amazing. So I'm making progress. But the funny thing is, the principles that we spoke about is really what makes it happen. Because you just have to start. A, a, a journey of a thousand miles starts with the first step. I started three, four months ago saying, I want to learn Dutch. It's close enough to Afrikaans. And I want to go on holiday one day in, in, in the Netherlands. And I want to speak their language when I get there. And, and I started learning this language. And, and I was putting, I put in some time every day to just try and understand this language. Um, and I'm learning and I'm learning it. And then we had a conversation in one of the map cafes one morning. And, and, and Glenn said, why don't you take it a bit more serious? Why don't you just learn a bit faster? M make effort in it. And then um, at the end of last week, I think, I got something back from Dr. I can't remember Doctor's name, who gave us the, the, the Malagasy. Oh, so yes, yes, yes. He gave us the, 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 the feedback on the, on the Malagasy side. And I assisted getting that into the system so that we can start working with it. And I thought to myself, why can't I do Dutch? I've learned some. It might not be perfect. But let me start. Let me go and put it together. And the funny thing is, I'm learning. I'm learning a lot more. I was like going through this program where you learn things. Now I'm putting things on paper and I'm working through it. And the translations really talk to you. And I'm saying, well, okay, cool. How would you say this in Dutch? It's a bit different to what we do. The funny thing is I'm learning. I'm actually learning a lot more now by translating than I've actually learned on the program. So once again, it's awesome. You just learn. You keep on learning. You create opportunities for yourself to learn. And I think, I mean, you, you've, you, 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 you really brought home the point that actually all four of the principles that we talked about this evening are being fully and completely applied. And we, we already know that all the languages of the world have been translated because it's been spoken. <laughs> So it's you know you might other people might not see it right now, but it's already done. It's a done deal. And uh, maybe just on that note, uh, if there's anyone out there who would like to participate in the process of translation, you know, it's one of the things that we'd like to do is have a video done on each of the gems as well. And perhaps one of the languages that we're busy with is your passion. We would love you to share a talk on that topic. Del Marie, lovely to have you joining us. Uh, good to good to have you part of tonight's show, and thanks for sharing your post this evening. Uh, Yuri, what, what 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 was your highlight from this evening's uh, session? Oh, um, thank you for for asking. the 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 key takeaway for me for this uh, this nice session uh, will be the uh, the the action. Yeah, you know. Uh, most of the time we have to realize that when it comes to to think of the project, we are a kind of fear of acting. Yeah, but acting is a is one of the the, 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 the greatest things to to do in order to make things happen, really happen. That's that's my my, my, my key takeaway. And, and and I love I love the French word for action. Can you tell us? Uh, it's quite the same thing. Action. There we go. You see, we're learning to speak. We're learning to speak French tonight. Yeah. <laughs> we just have to change the, the, the pronunciation a little bit. But that's that's yeah, the, the that's the way. Yeah. action. I think you know something, uh, Yuri. You you you're so right. Um, they are uh, a lot of times we we spend our time thinking about something and thinking about something and thinking about something until all the blood rushes to our head and we get cold feet <laughs> and we don't take action. And uh, I wonder how many of, uh, of the people out there have spent many hours at night thinking about the dream that they want to realize and then waking up in the morning and not acting on it. Um, so I would encourage you, whoever you are, Action, action, action. Um, any, there's, 
maybe there's there's a, a particular insight that you had this evening that you hadn't thought about before tonight, uh, which wasn't part of your preparation, but something that, that just stood out for you. Um, I know I introduced a couple new names, so now like Del Marie has uh, showed their four C's, <laughs> the four C's um, of creation. Is there something in particular that stood out for you this evening? Um. Yeah, I think the first principle was key. There's a virus that's been around forever uh, in this world called victimitis excusitis. All right, and, and I think that is a virus that that everybody believes in until you get to the point where you start changing language. For me, language is 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 the key thing. Uh, and a simple example is. As soon as I started changing, why is this happening to me, to a, what can I learn from this experience kind of thing, it shifted a lot of things. And I think for me that that, that ties up with, with the first principle. Language is so key. Um, Glenn is not talking about the COVID period. He's talking about the great preparation. If, if you think about it that way, the great preparation makes a lot more sense. It excites you. It creates another energy. So I think for me, what stood out big time is language. Um, we, 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 we're going through a patch at the MAPCA phase where we're correcting people if we use words. Don't use the word challenge, rather use opportunity. And, and I think there's, there's, there's method, in the, uh, method in the madness because you actually act on what he said there. And, and like Len pointed out, if you go and ask somebody what they want, it's very difficult for people these days to tell you exactly what they want. But they can give you a hell of a long list, and there I'm using a word, hell of a, which you shouldn't be using. Um, you get people that come back and tell you what they don't want. It's difficult for people to actually tell you what they want. Um, yes. and, and I think that limits us, yeah. Any, you, you, you're talking about something really important. Um, and before I, I share on that, um, just remember that question, what what do you want? Because I just want to acknowledge uh, Anton, uh, Anton Skirpus from um, Alberton, Mayerton area, who's joining us this evening. And, you know, Anton, um, he's, he's a man of action. You know, um, started with Map for Life way in the beginning. One of our very first members to join uh, back in the year 2000. Um, and maybe even 1999 at the end. And uh, Anton had an idea, um, which he later, the idea was to empower uh, people who were interested in studying medicine um, or give them the opportunity to try it out. And um, I think it was back in 2006. Anton, you can correct me. <laughs> If I've got the date incorrect, but in 2006, he already had um, a pack that he had put together that he had manufactured and he had this idea of the apprentice doctor. And, you know, today he travels around the world running five day programs with people aspiring to be medical students. I mean, I just think that's fantastic. And that was all about uh, about. Uh, taking an idea, writing it down, but then acting on it. I think I think I'm going to use the word action, Anton, uh, going forward. What do you think, Anton? <laughs> you know, just just action. That's what it's all about. And uh, I'm I'm hoping to join him one day when he goes to Serbia the next time, and and maybe share the platform with him there and influence some exciting new people. Uh, but getting back to what you were talking about just now about what do you want? You know, that's a question that we've been asking. There's a few of these kinds of questions that we ask. And um, the other one is, I wonder what the new year holds for me or for us. You know, is it going to be better than the last year? And, you know, I think these questions are need to be changed. If, if we if we want to talk about purpose, then purpose is not about coming to get something or coming to fetch something. I mean, this is evident when you see somebody, when you attend someone's funeral, 
<laughs> when they leave, when they depart in the box and you put the box underground, they take nothing with them. It's empty. So, so asking, you know, uh, having the, the, the question, what do you want, is a question that can't be answered when you connect with purpose. Um, so, so we we have to maybe change that question, and I think we've got to we've got to think about constructive ways to ask questions that connect people to purpose, and and maybe one of the questions is, um, so what have you come to give? You know th that that kind of question could put a person into a whole new space. Um, what is it that you've come to? What have you come to bring to the world? Um, these are questions that gets a person's mind into a whole new space. And, um, and for me, that thinking of, you know, these a new way of approaching is something that demands your and our attention. We need to start thinking about new ways to get people to fully and completely connect with purpose. Um, Elon Musk, um, which I'm sure many people have heard of these days, and, and maybe not so much about his exploits, but maybe more about the fact that he's one of the wealthy people on the planet. I think they all imagine spending his money. But he said something interesting in one of the interviews, one of the first interviews that I listened to some years ago. And the, the thing that he said was something radical for me anyway. He said, the answers are easy. What's difficult is the question. And what he was saying is that we need to rephrase the questions we ask. Because when we rephrase the question, we get a very different outcome. We get a very different answer. So I'm not sure. What, what questions are coming to your mind that maybe we could start exploring when it comes to this idea of purpose? Um, in my day job, I'm a business analyst. So, 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 so what I really do is I go to, 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 to clients that we've got and I go and ask them, they've got a problem and we need to come up with a solution. So I think my job is normally to go and ask questions. The aim for me is to get away with a what. What is it that we need to resolve for them? I am not interested in the whys. Um, so all the what's are, are put on paper. I go to the office and, and, and the whys and the hows, I think, is covered in the office. Why do they want that is not really of my concern, and uh, specifically not the hows. And, and I think the same applies in life. What, what you're saying is, is, is very true. The way that I ask a question will dictate the way that I would answer it. So, 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 uh, and, and I'm glad you picked it up as well. So, so what do you want is not a good question because it's not a constructive answer. So we want to ask ourselves clever questions so that we can answer that. And if we start on asking questions that tend to the why side, we know we're not on the right track. Th there shouldn't be a why in there. There should be more of imagination in the question than any why. Um, if I ask a question to say, um, what is your biggest dream? Could be a good question because now I'm not limiting myself. Um, I've read in, 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 in Disney, they've got the small room below the stairs. That is called the dream room. So whenever they want to make a, a, a new movie, an animation, whatever the case might be, they go into that room and they just come up with ideas. There's nothing that stops it. It's, it's an imagination room where they just come up with all these wonderful ideas. They put everything down. Nobody worries about how it's going to be realized. Can it be done? How will we do it? None of those things come up. That then puts, gets put on paper. Guess what? Principle two. Um, it gets put on paper and then it goes to the team and then the clever guys make it happen because that dream or that imagination was there. And I think that's where we should be going with our questions as well is is simple things like what can I learn from it and and that demands a mindset change to, to everything if I keep on looking inwards and I start asking questions 
like why is it happening to me? It means I'm inward focused. Then it's then it's around the success of me. Significance is about other people. What can I learn from it that I can share with people? Is is a more valid question. So I think for me the questions tend to almost not be related to myself um, because that's a, not a good question. It should be related to what can I give to the world. That would make it a good question. You know, any I think we, we're starting something here, and this is this is a dialogue that um, that tonight is is a, is is something that every single person listening to needs to begin to engage in. Um, just this morning, uh, I, I met somebody and I asked them a question that I shouldn't have asked, and the question was, "How has your week been?" Uh, now that 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 that's a kind of question that invites a particular response, and I I, I uh, was critical of the person's response, <laughs> but actually the question was was uh, a, a question a loaded question that was designed almost to get the wrong answer, and so wow Yori you're looking like a new man, <laughs> I've got to bring him on screen because now people can see, um, so uh, let's let uh, we can see. We can see the power is back. Thank, thank God that he didn't create us to be yeah. dependent <laughs> on a plug point <laughs> and that we are energized from the inside yeah. out. Um, you know, but I, I was just thinking because the response to how was your week was uh, no complaints. And, I, and I, in that moment, I just heard that expression that I've heard so many times in so many places, uh, no complaints or under the circumstances. Um, and, and those are phrases that are learned. We've, we've learned them from others and we repeat them. And I think we need to begin to look for alternatives that are more powerful, alternatives that create, not destroy. And uh, it's in it's the responsibility is on our side to ask questions that invite people to give creative answers as opposed to destructive answers, if that makes sense. Um, and I think this is an area that we need to explore a bit further. That specific question, how was your week, could have been changed. What impact did you make in the world this week? Would have, in my mind, be somebody something different. Because first of all, you need to think about how you're going to answer now because it's not the standard question so i can't use the standard answer i need to think and 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 maybe maybe just maybe there's a little bit of guilt inside of you because i've done nothing for the world everything was about myself uh that puts you on a trip so, so you're 100 right we should ask different questions I think I mean Yori. Yori was listening into us uh, in in the background there earlier, so he's he's been listening to our discussion, although he wasn't uh, live in the show. But um, Yori, you've you've been listening to this uh, concept of questions. You know, what is the right question that we should be asking, or maybe uh, what are the effective questions? Um, may, maybe maybe we should be thinking, what is the answer that we want? <laughs> What is the right answer and what question will produce that answer? What are, what are your thoughts on this, this train of uh, this, this route that we're heading down? I hope it's heading, we're heading in the right direction. But what are your thoughts on this? Thank you. I think that my, my point is uh, quite the same for the, uh, as uh, my colleague just uh, said that, the the way of uh, thinking to to formulate the question might might be aligned to to what we are experiencing uh, normally. Uh, how was your week? Is quite uh, uh, general, and we need to be more specific. So, uh, in order to 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 get a, a specific. Uh, also, that is my 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 thoughts about it. Yeah, I, I think I think you're right. You know, Henny, uh, uh, maybe when you when you ask somebody, it's like uh, whose whose life? You know, maybe we could even be that specific. Whose life did you touch this week? 
and 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 in what way? Um, uh, how did you use your gifts and talents this week to 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 transform someone's future? Um, I, I, this is this is something that we need to begin to practice. I, I think we need to almost write these things up um, mm-hmm. and and begin to to test them uh, with those people that we encounter. Test them on ourselves. So Yuri, I'm going to be um, I'm, I'm going to be looking for some some answers from you in terms of questions that we should be asking. And uh, and for those of you who are listening to the session this evening, uh, please share your ideas with us as well, because I think we could literally transform people's perspectives of purpose by changing the way we speak, the questions we ask. And um, I'm excited about that. Yuri, do you have any other comments about this evening? We, we, we're running, this is sort of, we're into the final stages of tonight. So we've got another another two minutes or so. And so maybe you can share just your highlight from this evening. And then Henny, yourself as well. And uh, we'll then close off the evening. And if anybody's uh, wanting to share their highlight with a post, please do so. We'd love to mention it before we close the show. Over to you, Yuri. Okay. Thank you, Glenn. Just to make it quickly, uh, and ask you a question is, uh, I think that it's uh, something that uh, it's a key uh, for 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 us to to see when uh, no, me, I mean how it's important to 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 address uh, uh, questions to people. So uh, one of the most question I, I would like to ask is, uh, what do you want in in your life? Because we have a lot of uh, talent, a lot of uh, uh, perspective, but we want to know exactly what do you want to accomplish. Even uh, uh, we can split them in terms of day, and uh, so that's to make it more uh, more practical. Uh, that's my, my, my you, know, you know what you know what I was thinking about when you were saying that, uh, Yuri, is um, just last week. There was a, a, a friend uh, that I have been engaging with over the years who talked about, or not talked about, sorry, <laughs> he was being talked about because it was his funeral. And, um, and you know, when you t- attend a funeral, it gives you a different perspective on life. And so while you were speaking, I, I was just thinking, maybe if we started thinking about what would you like other people to say about your life at your funeral? Because that might shift your entire focus from achieving things for yourself to doing things that have an impact in other people's lives. Um, so I think that that is that is a, a very important point. Any- I think from my side, m- maybe a challenge to all of us, let, let's go shake people's comfort zones. When, when you come around, when people see you, let them almost be scared, scared of you, tongue in cheek once again, scared of you, because they're not sure what you're going to ask them, because you're not going to ask them the standard question of how are you, how was your week? They almost need to be scared, because what question is, is any going to ask me right now that's going to make me make me think a little bit? That's going to take me out of my comfort zone. And I think if we can do that and challenge people to start getting out their comfort zones, I think then we're starting to make a, a, a difference. Then we're starting to do something right. We've lost you in terms of sound, Glenn. Yes, I'm there. I'm there. They, they're not going to be scared of you. They're going to be excited. They're going to be excited. <laughs> What's Henny going to ask next? How I, I'm going to be growing. I'm going to be getting more excited. And then we, we're not going to challenge people anymore. We're going to invite them. We're going to invite them to step into a world of opportunity. You know, Nguidi, Nguidi writes here, he says, we, we get so used to the daily life interactions without giving deep thought to what we intend to achieve. And I think that's so, so true. Thank you, Nguidi, for uh, sharing that. And Nguidi is um, sp- uh, 
speaking to us from East London. He's a, a family friend, um, and uh, he speaks Isi Koza. So, Ngwadi, you're listening tonight. We're waiting for the Isi Koza edition. On screen is Henny. He's waiting for you to volunteer because we want to set up something for the Isi Koza people. Um, and uh, Master, uh, you know, he just says that we need to learn to ask purposeful questions. And I think that is so, so important. Just in closing this evening, I want to uh, just, just say to everybody listening that at Map for Life, our mandate is to map the world. And that means that we need to empower you to help other people to map their world or their life. And we would love to have you become a Map for Life trainer or coach uh, to go through the program because there's a world out there that's desperate for direction. There's a world that's, that's seeking to live a life of meaning and purpose. And maybe you are passionate about helping people to achieve that. So I'd like to encourage you, if you've been thinking about becoming a Map for Life trainer or coach or mentor, please make contact with us. We'd love to have you to, to join. And we're going to be doing a program like that in the month of March. So prepare yourself. Uh, we'd love to have you to be part of that. Henny, thank you so much for joining this evening. It's always a pleasure to have you on our show. Uh, Yori, Great to have you join us from the DRC and also, of course, to Primrose from Zimbabwe who joined us earlier. You guys have been wonderful. Thank you to everybody who's been commenting tonight from all over Southern Africa. We're looking for people from other parts of the world to join us as well. Remember, we're going to be together again, same time, same place next Wednesday. I don't remember the date. It's probably the 22nd of of uh, February. And just as a last thing for, for, I saw we had somebody from Uganda. I'm going to be in Uganda on the 24th, 25th and 26th of February there to empower people to be trainers and coaches. So we would love you to join me there. It'll be wonderful to meet you. It's my first trip to uh, Kampala and I certainly look forward to the experience and meeting you in person. Good night, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Cheers, everyone. Thank Cheers, everyone. Bye-bye, everyone. <laughs>